Well, the sun's just about to come up and I'm really excited because this is the first time I've ever been to Dinner King Game Reserve just north of Pretoria. And I can't tell you how different the environment is here to what I'm used to. Normally I'm photographing in the savannah grasslands around my home in Johannesburg, but just an hour north of where I live, it's turned into a rich thorn field with tall grasses, deep thickets, thorns and acacia trees, and, uh, and lovely tall grass at the end of summer. Now, it's a chill morning today. It's probably the first bite of winter that I'm feeling, and that's also exciting because winter is a wonderful time to photograph animals in South Africa. Well, this area is totally new for me, and that's refreshing, but also difficult, because it's harder to find game and animals when you're not familiar with an area. You don't know where they're going to be and where they hang out. So it's important to look for signs. Now here I can see some uh, what looks like zebra dung, so I'm hopeful there's some zebra around, and also some, some dung from some other smaller buck species, looks like impala. And I can also see uh, the vehicle tracks have been overlain, by hoofprints and uh, other sign of animals. So I know for a fact that no vehicle has been here this morning because those hoofprints are on top of the tracks. So if I go down this road, hopefully I'll see some animals that are undisturbed by anyone else. Well, here's more of that sign that I was talking about. Uh, these are quite clearly lion tracks and quite surprising really to see them coming down the road. Now lions like to patrol their territories and often walk down roads and, and they uh, will leave these tracks in the early morning so seeing lions on a road like this uh, is actually quite likely especially given the fact that they don't like all cats like getting very wet and the grass has dew in it so they prefer to patrol down the roads. Uh, and uh, one often sees lion tracks and it's as well to pay attention to them. Now these are going away in uh, the direction that I'm not going. So I've obviously already driven past um, perhaps this lion and it's busy uh, hiding in the bush somewhere where I won't see it. Well so often all you can see in these uh, conditions with the tall grass is a pair of horns or a pair of ears and this particular pair of horns belong to a water buck which is lying in the grass over there. So that must mean there's water nearby. I've come across a small herd of female kudu, the grey ghosts. Now kudu are often the last antelope to leave an area and they survive very well in arid conditions, better so than most antelope. And you can see here that they're browsing, they're browsing leaves from the trees and how well suited they are to that with their long slender necks and their wonderful camouflage that makes them so hard to see amongst the shadows and the broken branches. They're wonderful animals with lovely soft fur and manes. And the, the males, of which there aren't any here at the moment, are spectacular, tall at the shoulder with wonderful spiraling horns.
Well, it's nice to get out the car and just walk very briefly around a place like this and just see what else is around that you can't normally see from a vehicle. So on the ground here we've got some long grasses, some flowers, I don't know if they're flowers or weeds, probably a bit of both, and some nice trees. We've got some uh, sweet, sweet thorn and uh, a red bush willow over there, which is quite nice to go and see. I've got to make my way through the entirety of the park to get to the exit gate. So I'm quite looking forward to that in this afternoon light. It's been a relatively slow day here so far, but I think that's only to be expected when one's visiting somewhere for the very first time and you don't really know where to find things or where the animals are or where the shots are. But it's been great just exploring this place and uh, the road network, it's, it's actually wonderful. It's, there's roads all over the place and every corner is new. I can't tell you how exciting that is for me because pretty much everywhere else I, I know like the back of my hand. So yeah, it's been great and I'm looking forward to uh, heading west as the sun sinks lower and maybe seeing something that I can actually photograph for you guys and show you what it's like out here. can hear blue wax bulls. They're in a, there's a group of them in a, in a thorn tree on the right here. Ah, oh, there's one. They never stay still long enough, these birds, especially with me trying to fit my camera to its mount. Well, the whole area is crawling with them, but they're on the far side of the tree. I wasn't able to get a video of, of any of them for you, but I did get a still. Bit of a grab shot, really. But I do like these little birds. They're quite cool. <laughs> Obviously, it's a lot easier to photograph them in a garden or in a fixed position or something like that where they're used to people. Uh, but I'm a glutton for punishment. I like photographing them in the bush, where they belong. When I'm driving around in the bush, especially thick bush like this, uh, I typically like to use one of the semi-automated camera modes. Uh, and the reason for that is I'm unlikely to be able uh, to be photographing against the sky. And, uh, oh, there's a really nice set of guinea fowl there. They're all getting down off the log. Man, it's a pain on the ass trying to do video. So I was just doing a piece to camera about the importance of using a semi-automated mode in bush like this. 
and of course I ran straight into a situation uh, that it made it much more difficult to use a semi-automated mode. So uh, he's guinea fowler now. We're sitting on a log uh, with a busy background and a much brighter background. Exactly the kind of situation you don't want to use a semi-automated mode in. So uh, I had to dial in some exposure compensation to adjust for it instead, uh, which is a perfectly valid way of doing things if you've got the dexterity in your fingers. And that's actually one of the things that I like about these bigger camera bodies compared to mirrorless cameras is the ease of which you know I can get my big paws uh, to the right buttons to make the adjustments that I need to make in a situation like this. With a mirrorless camera, one of those dinky little cameras, that's just one reason that I find them more difficult to use than a DSLR. So things are getting interesting here. There's an Impala Ram running through the dappled sunlight of the bush. On my left, there's a Triagama trotting across the road in front of me and a ground, oh, a tree squirrel in the tree on my right. And it all happened just as I decided to do a piece to camera to you guys. What are the chances? Anyway, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about why I use a semi-automated mode. Oh, there's a jackal up ahead. I'm going to have to stop. It's all happening here. So I spotted a jackal up ahead uh, just uh, just after that little piece of camera. I can't catch a break. Uh, so this afternoon light is, uh, is looking good and the animals are coming out. Let's see if I can catch up to this jackal. I've still got a, an 800 here, which is a big, a big telephoto for this kind of business. Maybe I'll change down. I think the jackal trotted off down this road to my right. And they don't typically hang around long. There he is, he's going down the road. Let's see if I can get a video for you. Oh, straight into the bushes. Oh, here he is. He's disappeared into the distance now. But it's nice to see these little creatures. Back to my uh, monologue on the value of AV mode. There you saw a uh, jackal popped out of nowhere. I had a tree squirrel, a tree agama, and an impala. What he could do? Three vastly, four vastly different subjects. And uh, to deal with that, uh, if you're not that dexterous with your hands in manual mode is difficult. Uh, I don't mind it really, I kind of prefer manual mode, but uh, just dialing in a little bit of exposure compensation like I did with the guinea fowl back there can, uh, can sort out any major problems you might have with using a semi-automated mode. So yeah, AV mode works pretty well for, for thick bush felt like this, which is full of surprises and full of different exposure requirements that you might uh, need to jump into quickly. Uh, you know, if you see something really rare, you don't want to be farting around looking for the right settings. Well, the afternoon sun's just getting better and better. It's a real winter's sun, finally. And uh, there's a definite chill in the air at the moment. And as the sun gets lower, the animals have been coming out. I don't know where they hide during the day, but suddenly, just at that critical point, when it gets a little bit cooler, the sun gets a little bit lower, they all start appearing as if by magic. So I got some shots of a, a wonderful uh, lot of banded mongoose. I, I really hope they came out so I can show you at the end of the video. But uh, my eyes are peeled for anything else that I might see now. And uh, I'm hoping I'll run into a few more 
sightings before having to leave in three quarters of an hour. I'm in the last of the red glow from the sun as it sets over the western horizon. And I think for dinner, King, that's a wrap. See you next time.